This is Eruri, where epic comes in many forms. Nine mountain ranges, coastline for miles, acres of dense forest. Millions are drawn to this part of North Wales every year. But this is a wild landscape. Hello! Where the best day of your life can quickly become the worst. Police emergency, how can I help? There's a little boy trapped in the mountain. And when a call for help comes in, the busiest network of rescue agencies in the country must join forces. How did you get here? Professionals and volunteers, side by side. Keep going. Each team bringing vital skills and local knowledge. Helicopter inbound. Of how to save a life in a landscape like no other. Two casualties from climate change and injuries. Life is good when people help each other. When the bell goes, your heart rate increases. Get a little bit excited and you're wondering what's going to happen next. Of the 17 emergency teams that cover Eruri, the Coast Guard search and rescue helicopter is one of the most striking. It can be very challenging. On any given day, you can find yourself being winched onto the top of Krivgok. Half an hour later, you can be winching people out of the water. I'm the guy that goes down the wire to get to the scene and stabilise and treat patients. When you know that somebody's very seriously injured or unwell, those things get the hairs on the back of your neck standing up. Tosti in the Ogwen Valley. The name means black hole but it's also known by another name here, Devil's Kitchen. Devil's Kitchen is an area that you, we get called to fairly frequently. Very, very popular place. Quite often it's people coming down it, it's steep, and that's where you're likely to slip. Hello, you've come through to North Wales Police, you dad, 999. There's a, a lady here, she slipped, she can't walk. She has pain in her right leg and she has quite a bad headache now. And in her back as well. I'll call Mountain Rescue. A 44 year old woman called Anastasia has fallen in the Tosti area, 500 metres up. North Wales Police use a specially created message system called SAR Call to alert every agency in Aruri that a call out is underway. Ideally, the Coast Guard helicopter would join the rescue, but they're on another call. So for now, Mountain Rescue will go it alone. Is she with anyone? Yeah, there's um, Victoria who's come across her. Just left the brew shack, heading up. Uh, towards the outflow, over. From base, team leader Jed gives advice to Victoria, a walker who has stopped to help. You get her into her warm clothes as much as you can, because what we don't want is her getting cold, because then we can't get her warm again. You've done really well, it's brilliant. So they should be... Mm, that's about where they are on the map. Yeah. The right of the sheep. Yes. We had to send up a team quickly. She was no longer able to walk and in a lot of pain. We're always worried about a C-spine injury because it might have damaged the nerves. C-spine injuries affect the cervical or upper spine and carry a high risk of paralysis. You're going to have to go quite a long way left or right to get over these rock bands. Did I hear you say you've taken painkillers? Two times ibuprofen. Okay, 
you probably start seeing them coming along the track. Uh, yeah, we've got the visual and we can hear them shouting. Anesthesia is only about a 30 minute hike from the roadside, but it isn't easy terrain. Remember his steps being misty? No, I don't. It's lots of big boulders and the path is winding and narrow and steep. It's a very difficult place to extract someone from if it's just us with a stretcher. Oggy base. Uh, that's <laughs> us on scene with Anastasia. Move your leg uh, up straight on your push that's fine, that's it. You worry. Okay. Oh, okay. I'm going to support it, OK? Before they move Anastasia, the team must work out how serious her injuries are. Can you put your yeah, leg flat on the floor, or does that give you more pain? This way. It's very difficult trying to treat someone and assess them when they're in a lot of pain. Oh, is, is that a change in... Was that because he moved to touch this leg? It's, it's all right, it's all right, it's all right. We're trained in casualty care, but we're not professionals. Bobby? Yeah. We quickly decided that we should try and get the Coast Guard helicopter to assist us. All their winchmen are, are paramedics, and they've got a much more substantial first aid kit. We're doing uh, cast care at the moment. L lumbar, hip, pelvic injury, over. Yeah, roger that. Leave it with me. Could I uh, put a formal request in for the helicopter, please? Rescue 936. It's Rescue 936, Oggy Base, over. As you come into the area, I'll make sure that they give their location over. Right, helicopter inbound. I need everything put away. It's going to get blown away. Came into the devil's kitchen. The left-hand seat pilot spotted the, the lady. They make an assessment of the scene. Winching in the back of devil's kitchen can get pretty horrible in there. In Tulti, a southwesterly wind blows over the top of the ridge and exerts a dangerous downdraft of air onto the helicopter below. It can get very turbulent and you start getting battered. In some cases, you just can't get in there at all because it will just force us onto the ground. The pilot has to use more power than usual to ride the wind and maintain a hover in the right position to winch Chris down. There's an awful lot that goes through your mind. You, you do get a kind of a knot in the pit of your stomach and you're like, am I going to be able to do this? I'm attached to the aircraft by a wire, so I'll go where the aircraft goes. I'll give hand signals and I'll get myself winched out somewhere level with the people that I want to go to so that I can see them the whole time. I'm not going to land on top of them, I'm not going to kick them, and I'm not going to drop anything onto them. And then I'll get carried sideways towards them. My name's Chris, I'm the paramedic from the helicopter. What yeah. happened to you today? I, I, I slipped on the drop. I don't want to make uh, Can you feel your legs and move your legs around OK? Yeah, I can. Yeah? OK, did you walk afterwards at all? No. You didn't? No, OK. Oh, that's it. Ah, oh, 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 move, 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 Piggy, move to the right. Ah, oh. Anastasia needs to be moved into a stretcher so she can be airlifted to hospital but she's in too much pain. If any portion of somebody's spine is injured, you have to immobilise their whole spine, and you can only do that when you've managed their pain adequately. Ah! Chris offers anaesthesia an inhaled painkiller called Penthrox, but she's reluctant to take it or any stronger medication. 
She had had a previously bad experience in hospital with pain relief, so she was frightened. Oh, yeah. No, you won't go to sleep, I promise you. You won't go to sleep. But it, don't be scared, you're in. You won't go to sleep, I promise. Anesthesia, I when, have... you, when you stop taking it, it goes away. So just try and relax. Take nice deep breaths. That's it. Just nice deep Come breaths on. in. And out. That's it. Good. When we needed her to move a little bit to get the vacuum mattress underneath. Brace, lift. Uh, oh, yes. It caused her a tremendous amount of pain. She was really screaming. Just her legs. Take some of the... Right, what do, you want, what do you want us to do with this leg? The team face a dilemma. Anastasia has already been lying on the mountain for around two hours and they can't force her to accept stronger pain relief. But in this state, there's no way she could be moved. I said to her, it's going to make you much more comfortable and, and all this can go away. Do you want me to drop some morphine as well? Because everything together works really beautifully, OK? But if you have more pain relief now, you're going to go into the helicopter, then we've got to... At hospital, we've got to get okay. you all out of this okay. and this. Great, let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> Finally, Anastasia agrees. I want to be a good sport yeah. to you all. Right, I'm going to give you some morphine, OK? Nice and slowly. <laughs> I'm going to give you 10 milligrams of morphine, OK? We're all wimps, really. 936, 936 mobile. <laughs> that particular form of pain relief is incredible. I've seen people, you know, who one minute are absolutely howling in pain and the next minute they're just like, oh, it's like they've had a, a bath full of gin. I have a song. Put your shoes and get your head. Leave your worries. <laughs> Don't step. Just direct your feet. On the sunny side of the street. See, I told you. Do you want to <laughs> cross <laughs> it? Taking you to the hospital now, all right. I'm cooperating. You're, you're great now, yeah, you're very cooperative now. Okay. But you were in a lot of pain before, which is, we don't really like that, so we've made you a bit more comfortable, which is good, so... 936, 936 mobile ready for lift. OK, thanks very much for your help. It's going to get amazingly windy now here, so just be very careful. Because we had the helicopter, it's a matter of minutes to get to the nearest hospital, whilst it would have been hours just to get to the roadside for us. Hello, world. Life is good when people help each other. <laughs> Robin, can you check that for me? Give that a squeeze to try and pull it off. Cool. Cheers, mate. Right, guys, thank you very much. Affirmative, Kaz in helicopter. Uh, we're just about to start coming back down the hill now, over. Anesthesia is safely on her way to hospital, where she's thankfully found to have escaped serious spinal injury. Ogwen team were on scene that day. Uh, they're all kind of mates of mine anyway. Whenever I see them on scene, there's a big sigh of relief from me. They know what to expect from me and I know what to expect from them. They're all volunteers and, you know, they're great people. Errori's agencies get called out to every kind of rescue in all kinds of places. The primary object is to look after the casualty. Everybody doing their job to save a life. Try and keep a straight line. And for Drew, 
who heads up Upper Glasslin Search and Rescue. Teamwork is the key to being ready for anything. We're looking for an orange sling. It's a special team. Well done, Tom <laughs> And when we come together, we're good at what we do. Upper Glasslin's patch includes the Frinantha. Once famous for mining slate and copper, these days it's mainly used for hill farming. But reminders of its mining history are everywhere. Hesley Cockleth coming in, North Wales Police. There's skin on it, and in the last time, I'm on a bad, bad, pretty skin, it loud, tight, or shaft, and it's a minute. But great big, it just, um, green to me, just to tell us, it's really loud, and then I. A sheep has been stuck in a mine shaft for 10 days, and a local farmer is worried it'll die if it isn't brought out soon. Oh, bloody hell. <laughs> it had climbed up as high as it could and eaten all the moss, the grass. Oh. There was a mine shaft to the right hand side, and that was some. 15 to 20 metres deep. Wouldn't like to think that the farmer would go down and rescue because if he slipped, then we'd have a, a serious casualty and uh, wouldn't like it to die unnecessarily. Whether it was a beast or not, it was still a rescue. Have you seen the animal? Yes. It's all right? Yeah, it's fine. The sheep was, I'd say, in high spirits and ready to come out. So there's four ropes, two crack kits, please. Unlike most rescues, this one isn't time critical, so Drew uses it to help the newer recruits gain some experience. Before we do anything else, guys, can we do buddy checks? Next, they need to find large rocks to anchor their ropes. Your line is wrong, so come back down. We pulled through, and now we're going back. These ropes must bear the weight of two team members, but who gets the job of going into the shaft? Are we putting M's on that? Yeah. We had two volunteers. M's, he foolishly volunteered to go down, quite eagerly, I'm hastened to add. And then Steve, he'd had dealings with goats and he felt he was able to go down and caress this, this said sheep. Big one. The rescue should be simple. Two rescuers abseil down into the shaft, place the sheep into a large builder's bag, and winch it up to safety. At least, that's the theory. Unfortunately, the sheep got spooked. They climbed up the side three metres above our rescuer's head. How safe are you there, Ems? Not if it falls on me. Come on. He's telling it to behave. <laughs> After much wriggling, sidestepping, and taunting <laughs> from the sheep. It's winding them up, it is. <sighs> it doesn't want to be rescued. <laughs> Here we go. Straight into the wall. Into the wall. It's eventually brought under control. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and into the caring arms of Steve. He did work his magic, and we have some unfortunate photos for said Steve, um, which will come out at the Christmas party. <laughs> <laughs> oh, his face was rather close, rather closer than I would have had mine. It'd be interesting to watch this footage, wouldn't it? <laughs> Sorry, Steve. <laughs> you got him? Yeah. Got you it. sure? Yeah. Just nice and tight. Yeah, got it. Ems takes instructions from the farmer about how to restrain the sheep for its own safety. Come on, take the sheep. Three, three, now. And it's finally freed. I was definitely proud of everybody. I wouldn't have thought that a, a sheep defines us as mountain rescue, but anything that has a breath in its body, then we'll do our best to save it.
But for every rescue like this, there are many more where the stakes are far higher. You know that there's somebody up there in difficulty, your heart sinks. So it's a big, big operation to get people out when things go wrong. Children, paediatric cases can be really full on. Definitely the possibility for it to be a really serious outcome. It's a Thursday evening in late August. Hello, please. Hi, Brian. We're, we're on a holiday campsite and there's a little boy trapped in the mountains. He's 15 years old. We can hear him shouting help. Okay. We're walking, making our way up there, but he's quite far at the top. His mum's behind me. Oh, he's, on his, he's on his own. Right, OK. All you can hear is help. I will contact Mountain Rescue now. As well as dispatching Mountain Rescue, the police alerts the agencies across the area using SAR call. Teenager Alfie is in trouble. He's missing on Moyle Gerst, a hill just outside Porth Maddog and directly behind the Aberglaslin base. I've had children. It does make a difference. It changes the way you think. Um, you become more, more emotionally involved in these incidents. I think we all move at a bit more of a pace. Darkness is falling fast. Oh, uh, Glasslin, 532, Glasslin base, stand up. So Mountain Rescue yeah. call on North Wales Police drone unit to join them in the rescue to speed up the search. A missing person search is one of the highest risk operations that we get involved in. Time is really of the essence. But the drone unit covers the whole of Aruri and the closest pilot is 40 miles away. So the Mountain Rescue volunteers start out alone and meet Alfie's mam, Annette. Oh, dear. Carl, thank you enough. Sorry to trouble you. Thank you. Earlier that evening, Alfie had climbed to the top of Moyla Guest and posted the video on his Snapchat. He'd phoned us. I'm up here. You know, and he's waving. I'm on the top. Then he rung me and said, oh, my phone's about to die. And I'm thinking, you know, this is time I'm ringing him. What does he Brazo, I just said, I'm going to go and see if I can see him. I walked out the caravan and I could hear, help me, help me. Oh, I nearly died. You know, that's the last thing you want to hear. I instantly thought something bad had happened to him. And at that point, you're thinking, has he fallen? You know, has he hurt himself? That was extremely worrying. 
he did the right thing, didn't he? Stopping in one spot. 100%. You know what I mean? 100%. You don't know what's below you, No, nope, absolutely not. Concern is spreading among people at the caravan park where Alfie was staying, who had heard his earlier shouts for help. He's gone up it and realise he's got himself a bit beyond his capabilities and he's gone dark and he's yeah, just, you know, he's gone dark really yeah, quick on him. He's got yeah. no torch, you can't see anything here. If you didn't have a torch now, it'd be pitch black, no, so no wonder he's, he's, he's come off where he has. Moyla Guest is directly behind the team's base and the spots they know well. Like the ground at the top box there is not very accessible for accessing downwards. It's very loose, it's very gorse covered in every sense. You know, you're up to your, over your head for all of us. They send the small group of rescuers up the hill towards where Alfie was last heard. Areas where it's so overgrown, it's impossible to see where you'd be placing your feet. Really nasty terrain. Being out at night changes everything. All we could hear was where he was roughly, so we had to have a bit of a guesstimate as to where he was going to be. Around an hour into the rescue, the police drone unit arrives on scene. We were able to cover a much larger area from the air with our zoom camera, which goes out to about 200 times zoom, which can clear an enormous area very, very quickly. Very effective is our thermal imaging camera. If there is somebody in the area that we're searching, we can find them more easily than someone searching on the ground. And we use our spotlight on the drone to light up the area it makes a massive difference to how they operate. With the hillside illuminated from above, Mountain Rescue can forge a path through the bracken. That's located him. He's fit and well and in good spirits. Alfie was in a very dangerous position. It was a big sign of relief to see that he wasn't injured, that he was absolutely fine. We'd come in on a really difficult path, so the drone came in to have a look at the geography around us, to be able to plan that route out. It was a relief to see them all turn up their head torches. There was one person, he'd owned an Indian, and he just forgot about his Indian and come and got me. That's pretty sound of him liking it. It's now around 11.30 p.m. Found him. <laughs> Three hours since Alfie first shouted for help. For his mum and dad, and everyone on the holiday park, it's been an emotional night. We definitely deserve a round of applause. Definitely. Well done. Well done, guys. Came back down the footpath and everybody gave us a bit of a clap and cheer, which is quite, quite nice. Hey. <laughs> That's always a good sight. <laughs> It was a massive relief to see him. Thank you very much, everybody. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. So I was just walking up, I was actually listening to music, Snapchatting people, taking videos of the nice scenery, and it was all well and good, really. Not looking at what percentage of my phone was on, which was obviously silly. No, I'm at the top. I take this path down, thinking it was the same path, and it just turned into like a sheep trail in the end, and before I knew it, there was no path left. And then looked at my phone, it was dead, died. At this point, I've just thought, I need to get down from here now. And it was so steep that when I was getting down through these woods, it was like literally like that. And I was just jumping on trees like Tarzan. And then I just thought in the end, this ain't gonna need work. to start half down for help here. Take you to the beach tomorrow and get you in the sea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they look nasty, mate. Yeah. They're a bit yeah. stingy. Yeah. Most rewarding aspect of working on the drone team is seeing those life-changing situations that we've played some part in. Without them, Alfie wouldn't have got down on his own. He'd come right off the path. Well, very, very grateful because they're putting themselves at risk, really, to help a complete stranger. Which you could argue, what was he doing up there in the first place, really, couldn't you? But without Mountain Rescue, I couldn't have made that path. Yep. 
Come on, then, let's all get off this hill. Well done. Well done, guys. Thank you. Well done, guys. Well done, guys. Those people who come into difficulty in the mountains, whether they were prepared or ill-prepared, it really doesn't matter to me or to our team. We're there to provide that service.